So how did you find yourself you know, creating this environment that is supportive and loving, or was it just not there and it was just something that you had to grind on? Um, it took a it took a village, and, and obviously, you know, in no shape or form, you can replace your parents, and you know, those are things that I'm missing, and I think uh, that I that I've missed, you know, me and my sister. So, um, to be able to have two kids now and to be able to love them like how I wanted to be loved by my parents, um, that's been a great blessing to me, and been you know, a ton of motivation to have a, a lovely wife that you know love and support me in every way. Um, Man, you can't ask for much more than that. And then, you know, growing up, um, it wasn't just my grandmother. It was my aunt. It was my uncles. It was everybody. It was a village, you know, to kind of steer me in the right direction. And I made some mistakes along the way. I think people, you know, um, you know, people get discouraged when they make mistakes and uh, don't understand it. That's part of the process. That's part of growing in every, in whether it's sports or, you know, business or uh, parenthood or whatever it is. Like, you no know, mistakes are going to come. It's about how you, you know, uh, get back up and uh, recover from those mistakes. Now, a word from our sponsors. Yeah, you hear that so often, uh, not only in successful athletes, but, you know, businesses and business uh, owners as well. And uh, that's a that's a struggle you overcame early on. And uh, it seems like, you know, gosh, just looking at it, things, things are just, I don't want to say easier, but... Uh, you know, downhill from there. Yeah. And I would say, honestly, I mean, you know, getting to know you and being around your wife and kids a few times, I mean, and I'll tell you, John, I'll tell the listeners out there, I mean, when you, if you meet Tavon, he's one of those people that his energy and his smile and his, his compassion and his realness of who he is, I mean, it's affectious. It's, there's no fake. There's no, I just have to do this because they make me, like, I have to smile because that's the right thing to do. He genuinely cares and is a truly loving person. And people forget, listeners out there forget, you know, I've been lucky. I'm a Lions fan, but I've got to be Mm -hmm. friends with it and meet a couple of the players. And that's not who they are. That's their job, right? They're, They're, Tavon Wilson is a husband and a father and, you know, so many other things, a brother to his sister. That is, this is just their job. And, and, really it's tough for them when they go out and have to deal with their job affecting who they are or what they look like you know to the world so i think Tavon really shows true leadership on and off the field that i've seen uh, around people and we hang out with some of the same same guys and everybody talks about like dude Tavon's the best person you'll ever meet he's such a great leader he's mm-hmm. you know so that, that's inspiring to know where you came from and how you got there let's talk a little bit about college so what position did you play in high school and then did what it converted into college what happened with that um, I played corner. I played corner pretty much my whole life. I played some receiver on offense, but uh, I played corner all through college. Actually, until my junior year, it was about two weeks before the season started, and I started uh, free safety. Got hurt um, towards Achilles, and um, coach came up to me and asked me. He said I was the only guy that knew um, the whole defense inside out. So he asked me would I be willing to move to uh, to safety for the team. And at that point, it was kind of a, a big challenge for me. I had. Now, I've been starting that corner since my freshman year, all Big Ten player of the year before. Uh, so, you know, I had a, I had something to think about, but ultimately, you know, I made the switch for the team, and, um, you know, it worked out for me. My senior year, I went back to corner, kind of played pretty much everywhere, though. Um, played corner, safety, linebacker, and um, that was, I think that was a um, big reason why I got drafted, you know, in the second round. No combine, no senior games. Um, you know, I just had my pro day, so... Um, it was funny because I didn't get invited to the combine. I was a four year starter. Yeah, I was a four year starter at Illinois in the Big Ten school. So um, it was kind of disheartening. But during the, during that process, I watched every single rep of the combine of DBs that went through there. So would and, you um, say that that motivated you that you weren't invited? It was more to using that as fuel to really get what you want to go. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, I watched. I knew all of their numbers by heart, everything. And if, if you matched up my numbers against the guys that was at the combine, I probably would have been the best safety there. So um, that was that was some that was great to you know be able to not have to go through all that process and still be able to go in the second round was a big blessing um, and something I'll never forget. Yeah, that's that's truly inspiring. We always talk about motivation here, and you obviously were motivated by by not being invited and you utilize that and, you know, busted your butt every single day and outperformed a lot of those guys and got drafted. I think what you were the second or third safety drafted, right? Is that, is that third right? Safety. Yep, third safety. Yeah. That's a big Mark deal. Byron, Mark Byron and Harrison Smith. <laughs> I was going to ask you if you knew the names. Yeah. 
So so you co- you you played for the Patriots, the the big Patriots, right? Winning the Super Bowl. So, you know, Prater's a good friend of both of ours, and he went to go to the Super Bowl this year. Um, and he said, man, I was really bothered watching this and not playing in the game. And he played in a Super Bowl before mm-hmm. when he was with the Broncos. And uh, they didn't win that year. He went. And he's really motivated, wants to go and try to win again. But you've been there before. Talk about what that's like in your profession to be the best of the best on a team like that. What does that really mean to you? What does that mean to your family? What does that feel like? If you could share that with the listeners. Um, I mean, like in that process as a player, um, you know, being with Bill and, you know, how he go about his business, um, you don't really kind of see all that. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, you know, we had an opportunity to win a lot of games there and we won a Super Bowl and that was awesome. Like, something you never, ever can, uh, like, make up. Like, you can't buy that. Like, there ain't enough money in the world to buy that feeling. And, um, you know, to be able to share that with my now wife, my mom was only my girlfriend then, um, my, you know, my family, um, that was just awesome. <laughs> like, it's something that I, I want that feeling again. I want to be able to share that feeling with my kids. Like, so that's why I wake up every day. That's why I go to work. And, you know, no matter what the record is or no matter what no one's saying, I, you know, I do my part and try to build everyone around me, uh, to, to do their part because, you know, I want others to have that feeling. That feeling is so awesome that you want to see other guys in that moment because, like, you know how special it is. So, um, it's, it's just a special moment. Now, a quick word from our sponsors. What about inspiration? You know, along your career, and, and you've had a pretty good career, and, and, you know, you've had some great coaches, and you've had some great teammates. It's, is there one or two folks that really stand out that you feel that have been inspiring to you to really make you want to do more? And look, me knowing you, I know that you give 110% regardless if they ask or not in every aspect of life. But are there certain yeah. people, I, lo- I know for me, there's certain people that when I get around, I get excited. I'm like, oh man, I got to really bring my game today, right? right? Whether they've been my manager or my supervisor, my peer, even someone that works for me or with me that gets me jacked up and juiced do you have a couple of folks like that 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 maybe have done that for you um yeah uh i'll say some different coaches uh, brian flores was my my position coach in new england and um up until him i never had a coach that challenged me in a way you know what i mean i was always kind of one of the better players on the team and being in new england i mean they don't care who you are you know what i mean um, you know, they want things done a certain way. So um, he was the co- first coach to really get up in my face and let me know some things that I didn't want to hear. And then um, as I grew older, he was one of those guys that told me the, th- told me the truth about, you know, how well I was doing. So you know, I got a lot of love and respect for him. Um, and I'll say Alan Williams, my position coach, when I got here, um, he found a way to, uh, you know, kind of coming from New England where you know, I didn't play so much, he kind of accepted me with open arms and kind of let me know that, um, whatever, you know, whatever that I'm going to get here, it's going to be earned and, um, no one is going to be given anything here. So, um, I was grateful for both of those guys across my career, um, as I got a pro, but, um, I, I gotta say the biggest inspiration to me is my grandmother and everything that she's done for me and my sister. Um, that's my number one hero, um, to, to raise, you know, two other kids after you've been already done raising your own and then, um, everything like pretty much, she was kind of like the neighborhood mom and, like everything she does, she's just an amazing woman inside and out. And to show, uh, I mean, to show her work ethic and you know, from working two, three jobs, uh, from taking taking in this family member and that family member, um, that's just where I develop my work ethic for. And my not, no quit attitude, no matter where, what is going on around me, that um, at, in the end it could be all right. You know, I mean, if you put the work in and you continue to keep your head down and work at it, I mean, you'll you'll come over on the other side. 